Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we'll continue the series of comparisons of sound between the Beatles albums on the stereo and mono CD box sets of 2009. Last time we went up to Beatles for sale and today we'll continue up to and including Sgt. Pepper's. And we start the second episode with the fifth Beatles studio album. Help. So for this album and the following album, Rubber Soul, I actually had three versions uh, to listen to and compare. The mono mix, the 1965 John George Martin original stereo mix, both of them included in the mono box set, and then the 2009 mix from the stereo box set. The songs I chose for this comparison were the title track, Help, and then Ticket to Ride, I Need You, and of course, Yesterday. Now, after listening to the title track on this album, namely the song Help, I've studied a little bit the forums and the discussions that have been happening in the past decades and I confirmed what I was listening to. Which is that the mono mix of the title track of this album is a very, very bad one. Initially I thought maybe my disc had something wrong and I started to question the authenticity of the box set because this mono mix of the track Help sounded really weird to me. The instruments were not clear, the voices were faint, the whole song seemed muffled and it was like it was recorded from a very bad source or at least mastered or remastered for CD very badly. In the end, I managed to confirm that the original mono mix of Help was done from a different audio source than the stereo mix with a different set of vocals by John, and that the mono mix was quite bad even originally, uh, and even on the best vinyl pressings of this album. So I kind of, you know, had a little bit of peace of mind, but I was still a little bit disappointed. Maybe in the future, whenever an anniversary deluxe edition of Help will be issued, a proper improved mono mix will be included as well. Anyway, in contrast, the stereo version sounded much cleaner and sharper. The 2009 stereo was louder considerably, uh, I would say, but not as clear sounding as the 65 stereo mix. Thankfully, Ticket to Ride sounded much better than Help, even in mono, however the stereo version still sounded cleaner and sharper. The 65 mix in particular, while the 2009 mix was a little bit louder and a little bit bass heavy for me. But this being such an iconic sound sounding song for the Beatles, I would say that the best balanced sounding version out of these three is the 1965 stereo mix. For I Need You, on the mono version which sounded quite well, the voices seemed warmer, whereas again in the stereo versions, especially the 2009 one, everything was just slightly louder. This made the percussion elements and things like cowbell sound clearer in the 2009 mix, whereas the 1965 stereo was a little bit softer, and for instance the cowbell is barely audible in that one, at least for me. And on yesterday I detected a little bit of reverb in the mono version in the middle of the songs, uh, but the voice and the guitar are really nicely mixed in this one. However, the 1965 stereo version provides a cleaner sound to me, even if there is a slight distracting element to it, where the guitar is heard primarily from the right channel. It becomes really balanced when the strings start to be heard from the left channel as well. The 2009 stereo mix, well, I didn't find anything significant uh, differently with this, other than it's a little bit louder again. So it seems to me like both the mono and the 1965 stereo versions are very good mixes of this song. In conclusion, for me, Help sounds better overall as an album on the 1965 stereo mix. And at least for this album, I think there was no contest between the three options. The 65 stereo really, really takes the cake here, and it was a really good idea to include it in the mono box set, although it would probably have made more sense to include it in the stereo box set instead. Rubber Soul. Even though Rubber Soul is the only other album from these two sets, which has basically three options to listen to, uh, mono, 1965 stereo and 2009 stereo mixes, for me the situation with this one proved to be quite different than on the previous album. I, I really, really love Rubber Soul and this will become apparent on one of the future videos when I'll share a ranking of the Beatles albums for me. But for this one, I started to include five tracks to focus and compare when deciding which version is better. So, these tracks for Rubber Soul are Drive My Car, Norwegian Wood, Nowhere Man, In My Life, and Wait. With Drive My Car, I found that the mono mix was quite warm and well balanced. On the 1965 stereo, the voices were again panned to the right channel with a very slight trace of them coming from the left. And you know, the whole mix seemed to have a sharper sound and seemed to be louder. Whereas the 2009 stereo mix retained the sharper sound and the increased volume, but also this time, the voices are split in both channels, so the mix just becomes better to listen to. Then on Norwegian Wood, in the 2009 stereo mix, the instruments seem just a little bit loud, kind of covering John's vocals, and there was also a slight touch of reverb that was quite noticeable for me. 
Whereas on the 1965 stereo mix, uh, there was less reverb, but there was a weird panning of some of the sounds from one channel to the other at the very beginning of the track. The mono mix, however, had a warmer voice track and it just overall sounded a little bit better than the stereo mixes. The mono mix of Nowhere Man sounded quite nice as well with nice vocals. The guitar sounded a little bit sharp. On the 65 stereo, again, we have a weird panning of sounds from one channel to the other with the voice being focused mostly on the right channel while the 2009 stereo is again a little bit louder but also has better balanced vocals, which makes me prefer this version. The 2009 stereo mix of End My Life uh, sounds really, really great to me. Uh, it's a very sharp sound, very clear sound. Uh, on the 1965 stereo, voices again are panned to the right side, although they are a bit warmer this time, uh, and the mono mix uh, sounds quite good. Again, warmer when compared to the stereo ones. But here it was quite difficult for me to decide on a version I preferred. The 2009 series seemed like it offered the clearest, cleanest sound in headphones. Same story with the mono mix of weight. Good balanced mono mix, warm sound, while the 1965 stereo again puts voices only on the right channel. And although it sounds clearer than the mono, it's also a little bit distracting because of this choice regarding vocals. Uh, finally, the 2009 stereo improves on this uh, by having the vocals centered. And so for me, the choice of the best sounding version of this song is between the mono and the 2009 stereo. Probably I will tend to lean towards the 2009 stereo just because it has a slightly clearer sound. For the album as a whole, I was really torn between the mono mixes and the 2009 stereo mixes, but you know, here I think I'll just stay with the 2009 stereo. It just seems like it improved on the 65 one and especially listening through speakers, but even in stereo on headphones, it sounds quite good and not too distracting. So the choices made with regards of panning certain sounds to one channel or another were quite well done in my opinion. For the following albums, I started to have quite a mixed bag of preferences for some songs between mono and stereo. And with all of the following albums, Revolver, Sgt. Pepper, Magical Mystery Tour, The White Album, and even with the Masters, I've had a more difficult time deciding which version of the album I would prefer. For Revolver, um, the track list is a little bit smaller printed, so it might be more difficult for you to see it, uh, but I will still have to set the album down. down. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to read through it. Um, for Revolver, I chose uh, the following songs, Eleanor Rigby, Tomorrow Never Knows, For No One, Got To Get You Into My Life, and Here, There and Everywhere. Starting with Ellen Rigby, I have to say that the mono mix is very grounded and a very nice mix. It's always pleasant to listen to. Uh, that being said, the stereo mix had a nicer sound at the chorus. Uh, it seemed like it was just a little bit stronger. But most of the vocals are again panned to the right channel and they tend to pan across the two channels during the repeat lines like all the lonely people, where do they all come from? And also during the chorus. Uh, this is a pity because it's a little bit distracting again, I would definitely prefer the stereo version of this song because it's clearer, crisper sound if it were not for the main vocals being locked for most of the song to one channel. On the mono version of Tomorrow Never Knows, I noticed that certain backwards tape elements seem louder while the voice is less audible or maybe this is how it just seemed to me, whereas on the stereo version, voice is sharper and certain sounds are also made more obvious. It seems that for songs like Tomorrow Never Knows, stereo just fits better for this kind of you know, experimental sounds that the Beatles engaged in uh, starting with this album. For No One is a vocal-centric song, I think, and the stereo version provides a clearer voice in both channels with the instrumental music falling a little bit into the background. Whereas in the mono, uh, you have a clearer rendition of the piano and of the clavichord on the track. But to be honest, for this track, I would have wished for an assort, uh, sort of a mix between the two. So I would love a stereo track where the instruments can be heard a little bit better, not to overtake the vocals. Uh, they are the most important part of the track for me. But still, I haven't heard the mixes on the 2022 anniversary uh, deluxe release of Revolver. I would just be curious to compare with those uh, when I have the chance. The mono version of Got To Get You Into My Life is a nice balanced mix. But uh, here I must say that I really like the stereo mix. It just sounded a bit clearer and crisper to me. And for this one, I kind of enjoy the trumpets pan to the right channel with the drums and tambourine on the left. Again, for here, there and everywhere, I can say I found the mono mix to be a well-balanced track, while on the stereo, um, you know, I found it also quite, quite enjoyable. And on it, the vocals were mostly centered, although I did detect a slight movement towards uh, the side in some moments of the song. 
Overall, for Revolver, as I mentioned, I found it very difficult to pick one option. So this would be the first album where my choice is actually equally split between stereo and mono. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Uh, this again has a smaller print uh, for the track list and I think this will happen for the other albums as well. Probably except the Magical Mystery Tour, but hopefully you can still read through it a little bit. So for Sgt. Pepper, I chose the songs which I thought were the most unique and representative for the album. Uh, which for me were the title track, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, along with the connect connected second track uh, with a little help from my friends. And to those I added Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, A Day in the Life, and Within You, Without You. The first two tracks in mono I basically considered together as one larger track. And to be honest, they sound really well linked together in the mono version. Both of them have balanced mixes and they just sound very good. They do sound like they would be a very cohesive side A of an EP. In the stereo, however, things are changing a little bit. And it's not that the tracks sound bad, and in fact, not at all. They do sound a little bit louder, but the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band track has the main voice panned again to the right while the chorus is panning left. And during certain pieces of the song, certain lyrics, the vocals get a little bit centered. Uh, and as opposed to the mono, the stereo mix seems to have a slightly stronger uh, drum section. Meanwhile, the stereo mix of With a Little Help From My Friends has the voices centered. There's slight reverb that is felt more than in the mono, but also the overall track just sounds clearer uh, to me than the mono does. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds on mono is a well-balanced mix. I just noticed what seemed to be a weird reverb on the chorus, but otherwise nothing major. It's just a great sounding track in mono. Whereas in stereo it seemed like the track is even clearer, a little bit louder again, the drums seem to be on only the left channel and it can get somewhat distracting at certain points, but the vocals seem pretty well balanced and centered, although for some verses it does seem like the volume on the vocals is slightly higher on the right channel. Not enough though to be an issue. A Day in the Life, in mono again, uh, like the other songs on this album, is a very nice and clean mix. On the stereo, it gets a little bit louder again, it does appear a little bit clearer. The voices here have this effect applied to them where they start on the right channel and then they move slightly center on certain points and then towards the left channel, which seems like it's a very deliberate production choice and makes for a more interesting listen. Also, one thing that I could distinguish better in the stereo was John's vocal harmonies supporting Paul's section of the track. And finally, on Within You, Without You in mono, it seems like the instrumental part, especially the percussion, was very clear, but it sounded to me like the vocals were a bit covered by the mix of instrumental parts. Whereas in stereo, the voice was properly centered, it just popped up more, uh, and it seemed like overall the song was slightly louder and good stereo mix for me, which I would tend to prefer for this track specifically. The overall conclusion for this album is that, again, it's a mixed bag. There are songs which for me sounded better in mono and songs which sounded better or more interestingly in stereo. So here I could just not make a choice, uh, but if I were to, uh, if I were to pinpoint to what my ideal listening experience of this album would be, I would probably include some of the songs in their mono mix and some of them in the stereo mix, just because some of them uh, in mono just sounded better, while the stereo for some of them seemed like the right choice. It's not even about the quality of sound, but it's just a few of the tracks are just really, really well suited for stereo mixes, for panning instruments and voices from one side to the other, and for using certain effects. It just sounded like the right choice for a few of the tracks, especially the more experimental ones. Today we're gonna stop here, but in the following video we'll continue with the Magical Mystery Tour, the White Album, and the Masters compilations. Thank you again very much for joining us, and we hope you'll return for the third and final episode. See you next time.